Well, this is neat. They have the single rider lines listed on the park map. They do? Are they even yeah. open yet? For Hagrid's, yeah. Hagrid's. Welcome to the Park Stop Podcast, episode 12. 11. My name's, Ali- <laughs> my name's Alicia Stella. With me, as always, my co Ian. What's up, kids? Uh, today, we're going to be talking about Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. I don't know if you've heard of it. Nope. It's, uh, no. Never heard of it. Little, little known thing. New attractions? Never. What's that? We've, we haven't started for half an hour since we started. <laughs> since we put the microphones on because we have animals. Yes, Mickey? You don't say. Leave the bone. <laughs> what was that? He just nosed a bone across the floor. Hey, bud. <laughs> like a dinosaur bone? Uh, no, it's only a, it's a small bone, but he makes a lot of noise with it because he is an oaf. So today's episode, we'll be talking about the Hagrid ride for the entire time, but there is some other news things that we'll get to in the near future, like the Big Fire restaurant at City Walk will be probably opening, or at least soft opening, very, very soon. The menus and prices are online. Lots of yummy food uh, and animals to eat. I'm (laughs) going to get that giant steak if it opens uh, for lunch in the next week. So by the time this comes out, I may have already um, done my best John Candy impression eating the steak in Great Outdoors. (laughs) Old 96er, is that what it is? Yeah, but it's only 16 ounces. But then when I think like, (laughs) I I get like an eight ounce steak when I go to Outback. So 16 is pretty big still. 16 is nothing. I got it all day. I can do that. Yeah, well, I think they're $38, which is not bad for a ribeye. No, that's not bad at all. Actually, there's a lot of affordable things on there that are like $16 or whatever, which is not much more than a quick service. So it's actually quite good. Is there anything on, anything on there that resembles a food challenge? Uh, yes. Two of the cowboy ribeyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in. 32 ounces? Is that what that is in? Yes. I'm in. Who's, who's um, buying? <laughs> Other things going on, uh, Endless Summer Surfside will be taking guests, uh, I think, at the end of this month. So we might talk about that. Uh, Terminator 2 3D entrance, former entrance, is finally behind work walls. So we might talk about the Bourne attraction that may or may not be opening later this year in a episode coming soon. Yay! There's still construction going on in there. People are seem very, very concerned about that. Yeah, there's lots of loud noises coming from the queue now, not so much from the theater itself. So hopefully that means we're actually getting down to I maybe an announcement. Maybe there'll be an announcement <laughs> in the near future. Who knows? Yeah. Not universal. I guess they wanted to focus on the other the other thing. What other thing? Um, Wait, what other thing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I just want to say also thanks to Nick at ET Sense. He sent me a candle and a room sprayer and the things are awesome. Uh, I am actually surprised at how good the candle smells. You did not tell me it was that good. I mean, I did. I told you it was the best thing now, right? Yep, it's, but it was. That, you kind of sold it a little better. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm not the best. Um, What's the... Uh, it's Park Stop, right? For our, for the code? Well, yeah. If you just go to etcent.com slash Park Stop, you'll get your 15% off at checkout. Um, that's an easy way to remember. Etcent.com slash park stop. So you said it was so good you wanted to eat it. Yeah, <laughs> please. It was said. delicious. <laughs> smells delicious. Send more. <laughs> I already ate this one. <laughs> did you did you notice while it's burning that the wax is actually sparkly? Yeah, it's cool. It's a really cool candle. I really like it. Thanks a lot. It's Nick. like it's like this like blue green sparkly. It almost looks like the galaxy when you look at it. It's so pretty. Yeah, it's really cool. You guys should get one. You feel like you're on the ride when you when you when you light the candle up. <laughs> you mean, do I feel like I'm standing in the queue? No, I feel like I'm on the ride now with that fog smell. I, I, it feels like the whole <laughs> building. Yeah, it's awesome. Okay, so Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure now open at Universal's Islands of Adventure in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Hogsmeade at Universal Orlando Resort. Uh, are you tired of saying all that yet? It never gets tiring. <laughs> so waiting in line for 10 hours, maybe, but not you didn't saying wait that. for 10 hours. All right. So talk spill because I haven't been on it. You've been on it. I want to know. I'm excited. Um, mm-hmm. Well, I will say mm-hmm. I've only ridden it once, but I'm going to put it at top three in Orlando for all the rides. 
That's where I'm going to put it. Top three. Okay, what are the other two that are kind of vying, not necessarily in order for you? We'll get to that later because I wanted to talk a little bit. I It's so weird because people are asking, like, did you enjoy the ride less considering how much you knew about it going into it? And it's like, it doesn't matter. Like, they told us. They, they put out blog posts and everything. They put out pictures of all the creatures. And I was like, wow, they're really spoiling it for everyone. But the ride itself, the actual coaster, can't be spoiled. Like, even if you saw a POV, you're not going to know how it feels until you're actually on the ride. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it's just like movies, too. You can read all the reviews. You're not going to know if you like it or what it's really like. So you sit through it. Makes sense. Yeah. So so the the video I did way back in the day had, uh, you know, the track layout was fairly accurate. I think I got a couple things wrong. And also they changed a couple things since I made that. So um, it is interesting to see the Thestral carriage that like I am 85% sure that's the same Thestral carriage that was out by the exit to the Hogwarts Express that used oh, to rock yeah, like yeah. a couple inches forward and backward. Seeing it on the ride, it looks like they painted it to look older but it looks the same. And then the flying Ford Anglia, I have to believe that's the same one that was in the queue for dragon challenge. Yeah, it would have to be. So it's, it's interesting to see them reusing props, uh, especially with that inaccurate $300 million price tag floating around the internet, which is totally not real by the way. <laughs> no, yeah, a little, a little too much. I think if you're spending $300 million, you probably wouldn't be recycling props. Yeah, probably not. <laughs> Uh, they are great animatronics, though, but I think the star of this ride is definitely the actual coaster itself and all of the different features and seven launches and backwards and drop track. But we'll get to that later. Um, mm-hmm. So this week started well, last week started very interesting. I went on Monday to get pictures because they had taken the walls down in front of the exit to the ride. Yep. And I went I wanted to I heard that and I wanted to go get some pictures and um as soon as I got over there, like there's sound effects and you can hear like different creatures. You can hear a wolf howling. And I'm asking the the team member, I'm like, is there a shrieking shack in there? Because I've been swearing up and down to everyone that there is no shrieking shack on this ride. But I hear howling. <laughs> and if I'm wrong, I swear, I'm going to be so upset. <laughs> um, and she's like, no, no shrieking shack that I can that I can see. They just have a lot of different sound effects. And I think that's really cool. It makes the area feel alive. But as I was over there taking pictures, I noticed um, underneath the owl post they they removed all the benches so it's just a big open covered area it was already filled with potter heads is that is that what they prefer to be called i don't know, I don't know. people who love harry potter and bloggers and we're talking like 9 30 a.m and this is packed and i'm like oh no are they gonna soft open today <laughs> Cut to 12 hours later, and I'm still there hoping for soft openings. Oh, man. <laughs> I was just going to go like cover the Jurassic Park stuff. I was going to go to the, take pictures of the walls around T2. And I ended up finding myself reporting on Potter Watch 2019 <laughs> on my Twitter. Uh, every little thing that happened. And uh, we never got to ride that day. But it was still a lot of fun. That's good. Uh, fun is good. And, yeah. Yeah, and, there, and I was reporting on all the little things. You know, team members got to ride, but they were having some technical issues, plus the the weather wasn't cooperating, so they didn't get that. It was like maybe two out of the five hours they were going to do team member previews, so that was a shame. Uh, but it was a lot of fun actually just hanging out. So Tuesday they had a media event, so I didn't go to the park then. But Wednesday I was like, let's do this again. Let's, <laughs> the media got to ride on Tuesday. Maybe they'll do soft openings on Wednesday morning. So I got there bright and early. And the benches are back, which is great. So I get myself a bench. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sitting with all the bloggers um, and the the theme, the the Harry Potter fans. Um, and again, stay there till nine thirty. Nothing. <laughs> oh man. Word was that they wanted to soft open, but because they never had a complete team member preview, like they kept trying and trying, and then they just ran out of time, and. Uh, when the storms came rolling in, the the techs that run the ride went home to sleep because the next day they had to open the ride. So there was just no way. And they kept telling us. And it was at a certain point, I knew they weren't going to soft open because I had heard the techs went to bed. <laughs> but And I would tell, I literally told everyone around me, listen, the soft opens are not going to happen. And they're like, yeah, but what if they do? <laughs> and I was like, that's true. And they're like, but you're still here anyway. So why should we? And I was like, yeah, that's a good point. So a line starts forming at like 7 or 8 p.m. and the park closes at 9. I'm like, guys, they're not going to let us in (laughs) just for an hour and then have to kick us out. They have to open in the morning and it's going to be a really early morning. 
So I'd tweet out that a line in- inexplicably has formed for no reason. And that makes more people get into line. Of course. It's the way it works. <laughs> Um, managers start coming out and usually it's just the team members telling you there's not going to be a soft open, but like area managers, like people dressed in the nice, um, like button up shirts come out and they're like, literally, seriously, guys, nothing is happening tonight. We're opening the ride tomorrow, bright and early, be there then. And they all still waited. So, but it was great talking to people and meeting people had a blast, met a bunch of, uh, different website owners, met a bunch of, uh, fans, fans of the podcast. Oh, shout out to all y'all. Uh, that's, that's so weird for me. I'm, I'm very awkward when people are like, I love your podcast. And it's like, thanks. I love your podcast too. I guess. I don't know what to say. I gave you, I gave everyone a button. Oh, nice. Here's a button. That's awesome. Yeah. I think I gave out 50 buttons in this week. Only 50. Um, try harder. No. <laughs> well, I, I didn't want to have a bag on me in case we would go on the ride. I didn't want to have to get a locker and waste time. So I just had like cargo shorts full of buttons. <laughs> Purse pants. Because I had two phone chargers on me. <laughs> What's funny is when I went on the ride, uh, I fit in the test seat, but my puffy pockets from uh, <laughs> putting my hat in there and my umbrella and my two phone chargers, my phone, my wallet, everything, that actually was getting caught up in the, uh, all the way down by my like my knees. That was getting caught up in the restraint system. So I was like, <laughs> no, I'm riding this thing. I will throw away my phone. Let me on this ride. <laughs> That's awesome. That's Should I got a funny. locker? Should I got a locker? So- Actually getting to opening day now. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's just that was just hopeful, <laughs> uh misplaced hope. Please. But it is it it's I guess it's unfortunate that they didn't soft open though. And they weren't they they were trying to do team member previews, and that's the only that and media are the only really tests that they had with real people. Hmm. Um but the storms just did not cooperate. Yeah, and that and then they had last minute changes to make too that they were still trying to wrap up, right? To double check everything. The current the current issues they're having now, I think, have a lot to do with the um, well timing um, and how many trains they have out. But also, I, I'm not a coaster expert, so you know, I'm sorry if I get terminology wrong or if I'm just way out there. But I'm hearing that the way the launches work is they calculate in real time based on the weight in the train itself how much force to use on the launch. Mm-hmm. So it's not always the same. Like you don't want to overlaunch if it's empty and you don't want to underlaunch if it's, uh, you know, got heavier weight. But every once in a while, and it even happened today before we started recording, they're, they're, the launches aren't enough and it's actually rolling back. So we're getting some rollbacks. Oh, that's interesting. Um, yeah. And I, I, I witnessed one of them and I talked to someone who was on while it happened and they're like, it got reset pretty fast. And within five minutes, it like we rolled back into the last launch and then it started the ride over right from where we were. But then I also talked to someone who um, had to be not so much evacuated, but I think they like pulled the person back. They pulled the train <clears> back to, I guess it was a longer distance to get to the, to the next launch. So they had to physically pull the train or something, mm-hmm. but so it's an interesting problem, but they have to, you know, fix the computers and have them do calculations better and the, they'll get used to it. And it's a problem with a lot of coasters, I'm sure. But then you just growing pain, but then you get the surprise launch too, right? The surprise. <laughs> la- yeah. <laughs> there was a, <laughs> I think uh, Brad Hughes got comment, uh, commented for the Fox 35 article on Friday that no, there was no announcements while they were stuck. <laughs> um, and then all of a sudden the ride just starts up after sitting for 15, 20 minutes or whatever. And he's like, you know, if they're just normally on rides, there's like, pl- please be aware, ride vehicles will begin motion at any time. Like there was no announcement whatsoever. Just sitting in the dark, devil stare, all of a sudden, just, like launch or whatever. So. Is it weird that I'm um, okay with that? It would be, it's an extra added thrill. Like you're <laughs> sitting there with your phone, you're like playing on Surprise. it. You're on Facebook. You're like, I wonder how long it's going to be stopped. Oh my God. Especially after being stopped for more than 10 minutes. At that point, I would, you know, think we're not <laughs> moving at all. But that's the technical issues they're having now besides the weather delays is if you have too many trains on the track and there is a rollback like this, it's more trains to have to worry about resetting and getting going. So that's something they have to worry about. But also even on my ride, um, one of the rooms, one of the scenes didn't have all the effects working. And I think that's a timing sensor issue. Yeah. So they're having to run with less trains than they possibly could at the end of the day. But still on opening day, they really they they really got everyone through as, as much as they could, especially the first half of the day. I was really impressed because I, I having watched the team member previews, I was worried they weren't going to be able to deal with the opening day. Um, but I think they did a good job. Now, 
people have been asking me. <laughs> <laughs> people have been asking you. People have been asking me what the technical issues were a few weeks ago. Um, Cause I said that it looks like testing has been halted and this is going to put everything back a week. Um, like they, they were running trains for months and then all of a sudden for six days or five days, they stopped completely. Yeah. I remember that. Um, and there was um, a certain article that talked about it last week or the week before about what they said was wrong with the ride mm-hmm. using the term. It's rough. <laughs> uh, it's a rough ride. <sighs> and that is not true. It is very smooth. It's a very smooth ride. It is not putting extra stress on like the, the track as the person stated whom friend of the show, by the way, um, I won't name, but uh, the, the real problem I think came down to the track switch. So there you go. That's that. Everyone wants to know what, what was wrong. The track switch was wrong. That, that, that's what I heard anyway. Um, and I believe it's the one after the spike, but also someone else told me they were also having issues with the track switch in the drop room. But I think that's, that's more of a, a cycle. It's more of a um, stacking up issue yep. because if the trains, if the trains aren't going through load fast enough, they have to halt right before the uh, drop track. Yeah. The switch makes sense too. Uh, Cause that's not, that's, that's, that's not an easy, like lightweight thing usually on a, on a coaster from what I gather. Well, this is, and this isn't like Everest where you stop for six or 30 seconds while it, it switches. Yeah. <laughs> it's supposed to be six. This one is, it switches while you're still in motion. There is no stop. That's crazy. Um, well, the Everest, so, the Everest one too, is, it, it switches really quick if you've seen the videos of it, but it's also really, really heavy. Yeah. And it, part of it is, you know, there's sensor after sensor after sensor where it's not going to let you go until it knows for sure it's safe. And that's something they were working out with the ride. And um, <laughs> I think they had to, I think they had to, replace a small piece of something um, and get the track switch working more reliably. And that stopped testing for six days or so. I, I, I think it was, I thought it was a week, but someone said it was running sooner than that. So maybe five days. But I think if it wasn't for that little incident, we probably would have had more team member previews sooner and soft opens maybe two days beforehand. And that would have helped things a little bit. Yeah. But they, you, you said the first day went pretty well anyway. So kudos to them. I mean, it, it went well, everyone, the, the, the days leading up to it, I kept saying, um, over under, what do you guys think? Eight hours wait on the opening day? And everyone's like, eight hours? Are you crazy? <laughs> this isn't like the opening of Hogsmeade. Like, this is just one ride. And I was like, guys, you are underestimating Potter fans, theme park fans, and how good this ride will yep. be. Like, you, you're you not. And and when opening day came and 20 minutes in, after nine o'clock, it's listed as a 10 hour wait. I'm looking at the app and I'm like, whoa, I was way, <laughs> like eight hours was under. <laughs> I, I did not see that coming. Apparently um, closer than they thought it was going to be. <clears throat> be quiet. And there's another article floating out there that I don't agree with all the points um, in the article, but namely the one that Universal is purposely uh, decreasing capacity to make the lines longer. Yeah, I don't like that one. I take issue with the idea that they're decreasing capacity on purpose to make the lines long. They don't have to, the lines were going to be long regardless. Um, And even if they're running at maybe full capacity because of the thunderstorms and lightning, I had a 20 minute lightning delay just 10 o'clock into the morning. You know, there's lightning within five or 10 miles. They have to actually stop the ride. So that was always going to be a delay and cause lines to get longer. And there's just so many people. I mean, with this line reached from Hogsmeade, all the way in front of Sinbad Theater, wrapped around the Mystic Fountain, behind Poseidon's Fury, through the extended queue of Poseidon's Fury, all the way around and whipping around Seuss Landing to the front of the lagoon and the front of the park, all the way to Marvel. Um, and at some point, it was actually all the way to the turnstiles. They had to stop letting people into the park <laughs> because the line was so long. That's pretty. So they actually held the, the the turnstiles. Like Even people that are like, I just want to go on the Hulk. It's like, hold on, the park's full. <laughs> oh, so. Man. Like, that's pretty impressive. It, that that's before the ride is even running. So you can't blame capacity for the fact that the lines are long when the line was going to be long regardless. Yeah, I mean, the best um, you could have done is maybe get a few more people through, but there was always going to be at least a 10-hour line. Cuz I think it I think it got to be 14 hours te- technically after the rain delays in the afternoon for some people who still got off the ride going it was worth it. So that's how good <laughs> the ride is. Uh, they they're, they're telling me on on YouTube they're like I waited 13 and a half hours. Totally worth it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, but uh, to say so that 
that they're decreasing the capacity on purpose. Like, sure, they wanted long lines. Yeah, I, I think that it's like the opposite of what Disney wanted with Star Wars and Disneyland. I think that Universal likes the optics. Sure, like the helicopter shot of a long line. That that's great. That's why they lined us all up before the park opened at six a.m. so they could get that nice long line. Uh, but capacity's sake, the techs and the people working on this ride are working so hard to get you know, get it running as smooth as possible. And until they had the crowds like this, there was really no way to know exactly how the coaster was going to behave working this well, hard. Let's be honest. Um, and they did a great job. And let's be honest, day. though. They don't really need the extra. Just saying that a, a Potter ride is open is enough advertising to get them all over the place. So they don't really need the extra anyway, even if they get it. So. It was fun opening day because there was there were a lot of people dressed up as uh, Harry Potter characters. There was one one woman was dressed as the monster, the Book of Monsters. That's I thought that was so a cool. really great outfit. Like her whole dress was like furry and had the face it on it and everything. So like it's 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 a big event and people come from around the world, especially Harry Potter fans, but also just theme park fans to ride a new ride. Oh, that's so cool. So so early morning, I get there. I think I got there about 440, 445, and I go to the parking garage and they're stopping people at the entrance and they stopped a couple people before me and made them turn around. But and then I drove in thinking, like, okay, he's not stopping me. And then he like turns around and he's like, no, 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 wait, wait, don't go. And it's like, uh, everyone's hanging out at TGI Fridays. We're opening the parking garage at 530. And I was like, okay, um, I can't get out of here because there's a car behind me. And he's like, just drive through, drive forward, drive through. So I go forward. And there's team member turn off on the left. And I, I I find myself right at the parking, um, right at the arm that goes up and down at the parking <laughs> thing, but it's closed. And I'm like, uh, it's security guards over there. I'm like, uh, he told me to drive through, but none of these are open. And he's like, oh, hold on. Let me get one of these open for you. And then some more people come up and there are more people come up. And there's like 12 of us all parked, <laughs> ready to go. And he's like, well... I just talked to someone. We're going to let you guys stay here. Just don't get out of your cars. So I got to hang out. First in line at the parking garage till 530. <laughs> and I'm looking at Twitter thinking, I'm going to be the first on this ride. It's going to be awesome. And people got there from Uber, got dropped off at 4, 330. They were already at Islands Adventure. Yeah, of course. Styles. So I was like, well, OK, I'm not first. But <laughs> at least I know I'm first <laughs> in the garage. That would have been too yeah, good. So I went to I wasn't that far back at the turnstiles at Islands Adventure. It's pitch black, dark out night. Uh, they let everyone in around six. Tons of people run to be like the first and I'm sitting there going, I am not running. I'm too old to run. I'm too out of well, shape to run. <laughs> so I ended up being like uh, 400 people back and that's okay. I was cool with that. Yeah, that's fine. Nobody wants to run. Come on. And then I sat on the ground for three hours and waited until they opened the ride. <laughs> Cause they, they weren't going to open the ride till nine. And I knew as soon as they let us into the park that I was going to like hear all these cheers and everyone around me and everyone's probably going to think, yay, we get to go on the ride right now. And I'm like, guys, temper your expectations. <laughs> They're not running this ride till nine. <laughs> they had um, the Today Show filming. They did that thing where they like uh, when Guardian Leviosa and all the boxes start floating because they have drones inside them, which is cool. It's a cool effect. Um, but everyone behind me is like, come on, get Today Show out of here. We want to go on the ride. <laughs> I don't blame them. I don't want to watch that either. Yeah. So. So. Okay. Okay. Yep. Uh, you said it was worth it. <laughs> now let's talk about the fun part. Can All right. We, uh, spoiler yeah, spoilers. Warning? Yeah. Can spoilers. We spoiler? Give me the cue. Uh, let's go. For, for anyone watching the video version, I will not show any unauthorized footage of the ride. I'm only going to show, like, I'll show everything in the queue. I'll show pre-show. But when it comes to the ride, if it wasn't released by Universal, I'm not going to show it. So there won't be extra added visual. See, Universal, we play by rules. And Give us press passes. Yeah, that's not happening. Yeah, I know. Uh, I tried. <laughs> I'm just glad they let me in still. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, but you know, if you've been following along uh, with either my YouTube channel or my articles or whatever, you probably already know nearly everything on this ride anyway. So... Uh, it shouldn't be come as too much of a shock. Although there were a couple, a couple surprises that I wasn't aware of. So that's interesting. So there will be minor spoilers if you've been following along. I'm excited. So yeah, there's twice as many lockers now. And you don't need metal detectors. So it's it's running a lot smoothly, a lot more smoothly to get lockers. Like, And they're pretty relaxed about it. If, if you can put it in your pocket, they'll let you take it on the ride. And that's awesome. That's very cool. They're even letting you take on... Um, Fanny packs. I'm like, what's the word people call? I call them hip pouches. I, I'm I hip think like that. Rhino's name is great. He calls them ab satches. 
ab satches. They let you take ab satches on <laughs> as long as they have three prongs. I don't know why that matters, but I guess the two prongs aren't good enough. But as long as you, the clicky thing has one, two, three teeth when you click it in, you can actually wear that on the ride. And I thought that was awesome. That is pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so you're not supposed to take cameras like big SLR cameras because they don't want you to be filming and you can't take bags. But otherwise, if it fits in your pocket, you're good to go. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I'm glad. Uh, I don't like using the lockers, especially because I always have my 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 uh, my purse pants on to carry everything. And they have the test seats out front, um, which I didn't try out front. I tried inside. I figured I'd be safe, at least on the motorbike. Oh, let's so, let, wait. Let's talk about that. Is yeah. there one? Is there one that has more room than the other as far as getting locked in? I think the motorbike is more forgiving for thighs and legs because you're not trapped in it with like in the ride yep. vehicle. But both of them are actually better in the belly area than I thought they would be. Cool. I I almost want to say they're better than Gringotts as far as belly goes. Actually, yeah. Because Gringotts, Gringotts is tight for me in legs and everywhere. Yeah, because I heard but this is I heard more complaints about hips and stuff than anything as far as the seats. Right. So uh, especially the sidecar, the way that it is, you have to put your feet very close together in the center of the sidecar. You can't have them out on the sides where like there's a footstep. Mm -hmm. So if your legs can't be that tight close together, then you have to sit on the motorbike. But that's fine. Yeah, because <laughs> at least there's an option there. Yeah, that's cool. I was curious know. about that. Uh, Banks Lee of the attractions magazine did a great video uh, the during the media event and he has a 48 inch waist and he was able to fit in both. It's just a little tighter in the sidecar. So if you're wondering, I wear a 42 inch waist uh, pants when I wear like the cargo pants, um, but my thighs are a little big. So, uh, you know, waist was actually pretty good. It was just lower on my legs that were a yeah. little tight. So, but if you have, you know, I, I don't be too concerned. I don't think it's as restrictive as uh uh, uh, forbidden journey, maybe just as restrictive or maybe even a little bit more forgiving than, uh, green gods. All right. So, all right. So Q. Okay. So the exterior Q actually, after you actually go through the, actually, after you actually go through the arch into the Q area, it's really cool. Cause you have like this Vista view of the roller coaster in several different sections of the roller coaster. It's very similar to how dueling dragons was, but because there's like a forest area and the big ruins, you can only kind of see the front half of the roller coaster from here. Oh, that's kind of cool. And they, they redid this area a lot, even though there's like there's no more banners for the different uh, uh, Triwizard Cup tournament people. Uh, but there's like these arrows that maybe Hagrid painted because they're not like perfect. <laughs> it's like <laughs> go this way and he painted them. Like I remember the cake that said happy birthday. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Harry. And it's like misspelled. Like I just imagine that him painting these arrows like come <laughs> to class. It's this way today. And it's cute. Um, the other side of his Hagrid's hut where the metal detectors used to be is now this big area with switchbacks. So it's like a little extra external cue, oh, exterior cool. cue. Um, and they put up like garden stuff and there's pumpkins. One of the pumpkins is slashed open by a creature. It's neat. <laughs> um, that's awesome. Oh, that's so and, cool. and there's sound effects. This is the uh, gnomes, I guess, that live around the, the Hogwarts grounds. You can hear little gnomes and they're like, they, I guess they're digging or working. So like you hear gnomes working sound effects <laughs> under the ground. <laughs> Sound like the pirates digging. Um, but I mean, it's a lot better themed than, you know, metal detectors right here. It's a nice yeah, little area. No joke. I, it's impressive going into the old castle facade because now they've rebricked it completely, even though they kept like the turret and they kept uh, some of the arches and they added some more. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have the view of the ruins on your right a little bit, but there's a big wall blocking your view. You can't even see the coaster once you're up to the entrance when you're actually <sighs> at the castle. Can't see the coaster like at all. Um, and it's that. actually kind of quiet. It's It's neat. So you're like entering that. this old abandoned uh, ruins section behind Hogwarts Castle. Um, yeah. And there's like green men statues in multiple mm. places. Really? I, I, yeah. It's not just that one. There's another one. So there's, um, they're leaning hard into that kind of iconography, I guess. Yeah. For the entrance. And, well, That's cool. and he has a garden. <laughs> so <laughs> That's cool. Maybe it helps the garden grow. And there's the, the mer people statue right there. Um, but then you go in and they kept this nearly the same um although you skip the the, the tent entrance that used to be mm -hmm. where you, you'd split into express or whatever 
Oh, and I didn't mention it, but the single rider queue splits earlier up by the garden. Um, and then you are trapped in a tunnel for the whole time. You don't get the pre-show and you don't get any cool theming. You just are trapped in a low air conditioned tunnel. Enjoy. <laughs> oh, that sounds awesome. <laughs> and from at least one account, uh, single riders is not only just as long as the regular line in most cases, but sometimes the regular line goes on before you. So you're not going into single riders to save time. Sometimes, sometimes you're just going in there to make it easier for them to fill seats. And it's the same thing with rip ride rocket. Like that's the longest single rider line. So be warned when it's a yeah. coaster two by two, it doesn't, they don't need singles as much. I think. Yeah, it makes sense. Plus they're still getting used to it. So maybe it'll get shorter as it goes. So anyway, when you enter this door, you turn to the left and this is where the Triwizard Cup was in mm -hmm. a round little area. And there are drag. Well, there's all kinds of magical creatures painted on the wall, but then there are two dragons and it says the dueling club and like this faded paint. Um, yeah, that's and awesome. It's a nice homage, but on the left and the right of the words, the dueling club, which is in the dueling dragons font, not dragon challenge, but the dueling dragons font on the left is a. Uh, uh, one of the dragons and on the uh, above it and then on the right is the other one below it and it is in the exact same pose as the old entry for dueling dragons like the oh, statues. oh i love that i love and that. it's kind of the first thing you see when you enter because you turn left but you can see it straight ahead of you so i love that that's that's really nice, nice. yeah there's like more of a presence of dueling dragons now than there were when dragon challenge opened <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing so but it right out oh thunder scared me Right after this, though, you go right into the pre-show. And I think the pre-show room is taking up the space that used to be that tent. Like, it was very clever oh. the way they did all this. Okay. Like, that tent entrance with, their, like, their weird juice. <laughs> and the, <laughs> the striped and the, and the cots. I, I don't know. Yeah. So, uh, pre-show. What's the pre-show like? I really like the pre-show. It's just like the Musion pre-show for Gringotts. Um, but mm. instead of just people talking in an office, uh, it's got a lot going on. Like it explains uh, how because um, it's got Hagrid, and it's got Arthur Weasley and Arthur is not only fixing uh, Sirius Black's is it Sirius Black, Sirius Black's motor motorbike, but he's also duplicating it. So it explains why we're in a long chain of, you know, motorbikes later on. Yeah. Uh, and he even fills up the dragon fire with his wand. and It's neat because it like fills up with fire. Um, and of course, there's just like uh, a thing of Cornish pixies in a birdcage and Fang comes in, knocks them all over and they fly everywhere. And like oh, things cool. in the room actually get knocked over and uh, a light gets burnt out. And so like it's it's better interaction than uh, the Musion shows usually are. Oh, that's cool. I like um, it. Yeah, it's kind of like the Muppet Vision type thing where the, the walls have effects that match what's happening on the screen. Um, and then, you know, the... A, fire, a torch gets knocked over or something and then salamanders come and Hagrid just talking casually and he's like, oh, this <laughs> salamanders, they, they feed on fire. And I'm like, oh, there's the salamanders. I was wondering where they would be. Um, and meanwhile, Arthur's like trying to, you know, control the chaos. And then he goes to put out the fire and sprays everyone with water because it's a universal ride. You got to get sprayed with water. Of course. And it's a big spray of water. <laughs> it's, it's, I scream. It, I, I videotape the, the pre-show and you'll hear me screaming because it's just a like spray. It's like the sprinklers come on for the fire <laughs> is a big spray. Um, oh, but there's I think there's air blasts, too, um, because the dragon fire gets yeah, they press the button, the dragon fire button on the motorbike and it explodes with fire everywhere. Oh. So there's like an air blast, too. It's pretty neat. Oh, that sounds fun. Uh, but I love that this is the setup for today's class. It's like Hagrid's like, welcome to today's Care of Magical Creatures class. We're going to check out some blast ended scroots if they don't kill each other first. <laughs> like, oh, my God. Whoa, what? <laughs> um, and at one point, Arthur's like, bloody hell. And, uh, people around me are like, this is not appropriate. I'm like, yes, this is awesome. <laughs> this is universal. And, <laughs> and he also says, we might even get to see a unicorn. I'm like, you're. Darn toot, we're going to see a unicorn. <laughs> Major day. Mm hmm. So it was, it was a good pre show. I liked it. It's a lot, a lot going on, but it's, also it explains the plot of everything perfectly. And then you, if you do Express or Single Rider, you totally skip it. And that's sad. That sucks. You don't. Oh, that's horrible. I mean, Shit. Gringotts 
if you do single rider at Gringotts, you skip it. But I think Express still goes through. Like they have two different walkways, and Express still gets to go through the pre-show. I'm pretty but sure not it here. does. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, it not does, here. Actually. That's sad. That sounds like not something that Express is open. Miss. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to get anyone's hopes up. Express is not opening for months. Probably they they gotta, you know, work out the kinks here. And when the line gets shorter, I'm sure they'll introduce it. Maybe in the fall. Maybe that sucks that you miss it though. That sounds like a really cool thing to see. I mean, you gotta do it at least once. That's how I am with you know all the single writers, especially. That sounds like a song. All the single writers. Oh all boy. Th- all right. Mm-hmm. Nope. <laughs> um. From this point on, a lot of the queue doesn't feel anything like it used to. Like they did a really good job of rerouting a lot of the directions you walk um, and redoing the rooms completely, resurfacing every material. Uh, Then the first room is just mostly um, there's some weird pods that something hatched out of. I don't know what they are. Uh, Some Harry Potter (laughs) fan can tell me. It, It looks like something from Pandora almost, like just a tree with weird like bird pods um and there's a big fireplace lots of firewood it's a really cool room not much going on and then uh some of the halls some of the the catacombs still exist that were in the old dragon challenge and dueling dragons so i assume that they're load-bearing catacombs oh yeah that would make sense <laughs> <laughs> but it was neat because we went into the first one and i'm like oh this is where the the banging doors were that was there for dueling dragons oh, and then cool. half of the dragon challenge time, but then someone put their ear to it and got banged in the head. So now it no longer moved, uh, but they paved over it. It's like just a rock wall now. So oh. you can kind of see where it used to be, but, and they resurfaced it. Like they must've ripped all the, the rock work out and put in new rock work. Cause now it's almost like a brick rock work for the first two catacombs instead of the rough rock work. Like I'm in a cave. Now it's more like I'm in a dungeon tunnel. Mm. And, and it's taller. The first hallway is actually taller. So it's a little less claustrophobic. <laughs> For you. <laughs> a little less. A little less. There's another room that's really open, wide open. I, again, I don't know where this came from. Like that, they've reorganized the queue enough that somehow they have a big, open, tall room that didn't used to exist. And uh, it's got these big windows, like big church windows. And there's actually a lighting effect that makes it look like clouds are passing outside. Whoa. Like it goes dim, dim and dark. And then it goes bright. Like it's the sun getting covered up in clouds That's and it's covered cool. in spider webs. And it's covered in like, you could see trees starting to inch in and start growing inside from outside. Whoa. There's vines hanging from uh, skylights and it's like the walls are shelves of dragon eggs and different creature eggs. Whoa. And I think one of the gold uh, Triwars of Tournament eggs are in a glass case hidden in there. So I'm guessing it's the real one that was in the movie because there were three in the Dragon Challenge queue and one was from the movie. So I'm guessing that one that was real ended up back in the queue somewhere. So be on the lookout for the gold egg. (laughs) Does it go with the gold (laughs) Kong statue? Kind (laughs) of. I mean, it's it fits along with all the the real. There's one of them's hatched. I love that there's a giant one that's hatched, like a giant dragon egg. That's so cool. And there's uh, chalk drawings all over the walls, maybe of like what students drew, uh, different creatures and wrote different things. Man, that sounds so, so I, amazing. I, I can't wait to go through it again because I kind of walked through this room pretty fast, but I wanted to see all the different things written on the wall. And now, what's next? Uh, more catacombs. Yep. Nothing really much going on in there. There's this great place where the air conditioning just blows really, really hard. So I sat there and like, people were like, come on, there's people ahead of me. I'm like, we'll catch up. We'll catch up. I want to stand here. For a <laughs> which, um, which, and then there's the, which part did you get stuck what? in sitting? It was right before load, right before <laughs> load. So you turn this corner and there's a TV screen. Yep. It's just like a normal TV screen hanging on a normal TV hanger with a normal cord plugged into a normal socket so i'm guessing that they're going to work on that and theme that a little <laughs> better um with look like the the warnings for like how to get into the ride look like airline uh warnings with like <laughs> nondescript drawn people i think funny. it's trying to look like ministry instructions but it looks a little too muggle to to fit so i'm guessing they're going to put a box around it like that says you know direct from the ministry or something maybe uh so that we go you turn a corner and this is where the test seats are and uh, the team members are great. They're like, does anyone want to try a test seat? And they're like, try not to look at me. They look around they're like, does anyone here want to try a test seat? Anyone at all? I'm like, okay, I'll try a test seat. Uh, and a little light, green light goes on if it fits and red light stays on if it doesn't fit. So that's really good. 
it's kind of off to the corner. So no one's like watching you do it either. It's actually very nice. And this room is really cool. It's got like projection effects on the roof. Um, and it continues the storyline in this. Oh, I skipped a room. I skipped the, the, the Scroot lab. There's a laboratory with different creatures on the walls and different books open and educational stuff and a jar of eyeballs. And that's where <laughs> the express, the express merges in this room. Yep. Um, and it's, it's pretty neat looking. It's really well themed, but, uh, and you, if you could hear it, Hagrid's telling you about different creatures, but everyone was too loud. So I couldn't hear it. So in the, the other room, this is the last room before load. The roof has this projection effect, which kind of reminds me of the dragon's projection going on in Dragon Challenge above you at the load area. But there's uh, the motorbike spin, like driving around. Hagrid's telling you about like um, the dragon fire has a nice kick to it and all this different stuff. It's kind of the same stuff touched on in the pre-show. So if you miss the pre-show, you, at least you get this. If you're stuck in this room, though, you will go insane from the no, noise. I was going to say, how many times <laughs> did you hear this? <laughs> at least I wasn't directly in it. I was in the hall next to it. <laughs> um, but every time the dragon fire went off and the like one of the motorbikes explodes above you, uh, I heard that every single time. And at one point, spiders walk by. At one point, uh, a scroot walks in. Uh, at one point, the Cornish pixies are flying around. So a lot of the pre-show stuff is re-explained, but it's also really cool to look at. That's cool. I like that. I'm good with that. So yeah, then I went to a hallway, then I sat there for 20 minutes while the lightning passed, even though it wasn't storming out at all. And then I finally got on the ride. <laughs> the moment of truth. Yes. <laughs> so I decided I was going to sit in the sidecar. Um, I was waiting. Well, I was waiting with lots of people all morning. We all got to know each other. Most of us we'd seen from previous days because we were stupid and thought there'd be soft opens. <laughs> so we were all a family at this point. Uh, but the, the person I was waiting with... Um, I let him ride in the motorbike. I, I want. I actually wanted to try the sidecar because I think being closer because everything is on the left. So I thought being closer to everything, but also I heard that there's better air time because you're closer to the track, which is I think something you said you would be interested in. Yeah, like yeah. I'm your your butt is closer to the track, so it is. It is a exhilarating experience. I haven't done. I haven't done the motorbike yet, but I could uh, I could see how they could both like because on the bike you look more like more out in the open, which right. is its own kind of sensation. And then if you get more airtime and be closer to the track, that's a whole other thing. So I'm curious about both. And the load platform is a moving platform, just like Forbidden Journey. Oh, oh, don't act like you're, you're surprised. I hoped that you had seen my video when I talked about that a year ago. <laughs> totally, yeah, it's forgot, like a little actually. That's that's one of those ones where I was like, oh, I'm kind of surprised this ended up being like that's a rumor that ended up being true, but um, it's a lot longer than like Rip Ride Rocket, so it was more time to get in. Oh, that's good. I always feel rushed trying to get on that ride, so rushed that I always forget to put in a code for music, so I always end up with like Get Busy Child. Yeah, like that has the shortest distance, and you have the most to do. This one <laughs> you just have to get in. I guess it could be a little difficult for some people to maneuver like over one seat and then into the motorbike seat. So it's good that there's a lot of time and supposedly they can turn it up faster. So once they have more trains on the ride, they might actually get the loading belt faster. <laughs> you see people hustling to get into seats. Mm hmm. The ride. I'll just talk about my, my what I think like the ride is really awesome. <laughs> the ride is really fun. <clears throat> it is just a good old fashioned fun ride. Like um i'm not a big fan of coasters that are thrilling just for the sake of being thrilling like i did tigris not that long ago that just opened at bush mm. gardens and the ride is like it's got some great power to it and the launches are really interesting but at the same time it's like without a story and without somewhere to go because it's just a loop <clears throat> it's not something i would like would do over and over again i like cheetah hunt because it's got so much distance to it it's like it feels like you're on some kind of adventure you're on a journey Mm -hmm. and it's got some good motion like it's got great launches and cheetah hunts like a like a pouncing cheetah like wow like it's fun <laughs> and it, it's exhilarating <laughs> and, it's got, and i have a smile on my face the whole time tigress i'm at the top and like you do this heartline roll that's so slow you literally just fall out of your seat and it's like what's the fun of this <laughs> like hey let me just kind of shake you out of the car and then like hopefully you can, don't fall out like that's not fun there's nothing fun about that. <laughs> Don't do that. I want to stay in this car, please. So this ride is um, like everyone had their hands up and it's rare. Like if a coaster is too thrilling, not everyone puts their hands up because, you know, you want to mm -hmm. hold on for your life. 
Or if it's too boring, no one puts their hands up because it's too boring. This was just right and perfect in the middle where like it's thrilling enough, but also everyone's got a huge smile on their face the whole time. <laughs> um, and it really it just kind of like starts like you you're turning around the corner. There's a festival carriage. Hagrid's talking to you in the onboard audio and he's like, uh, pay no mind to the festivals. And I'm like, what festivals? I don't see any festivals. So <laughs> maybe someone can see the festivals, but I don't see the festivals. I um, should be able to. And next thing you know, there's the, and the seventh launch was something I didn't talk about in my old video because I think it's a recent, it was a, it was a later change because this was going to mm. be the car scene, the car on the stick scene and it got cut. So instead of just rolling slowly, you got a little mini launch before the big launch now. Nice. I'm not complaining about that. And just that mini launch, because like it times it with the motorbike sounds, like it just feels like revving a motor, like a motorcycle. It's like, vroom, vroom, and like you feel <laughs> like you kick back into your seat a little bit and you're like, whoa. Um, but by the first big launch, the second launch, uh, you realize this is going to be fun. Like it's just immediately everyone's <laughs> like into it. It is exciting. Uh, you go in front of like the, you do a little bunny hop, bunny hill in front of the, the right entrance and you go into the the round structure where the scroot is inside. Now for my ride, the scroot wasn't working. And I, I was like, I was really sad. I was like, Oh no, this whole ride, everything's going to be frozen, but it was just this one scene. Uh, and that includes the Hagrid animatronic, which was in, I guess it's his B mode, but it still moves. Mm -hmm. So that's not bad. Like I'm glad that B mode is not frozen entirely, but his mouth wasn't <laughs> moving. He wasn't talking. You can hear him talking, but he wasn't talking, but normally the scroot it rocks back and forth and um it shoots it, like smoke it out of its yeah it shoots smoke out of its butt and it has like a lighting effect so it looks like it's red but none of that was happening so he was just sitting there and i know there's been a lot of complaints you could see the pole underneath him and i think with the fog effect working it might have hidden it a little bit but he yeah. is just on a pole rotating left and right <laughs> normally <laughs> he would be so but i have to see it again to really make my opinion on that it's tall it's really big that's cool. Can't and complain Hagrid, about that. Hagrid looked really good, but he was just moving very, very little. Uh, so I definitely want to see it when he's actually talking. That sounds fine. I mean, if there is fog and you can't see underneath the thing, then it won't matter. But it doesn't slow down too much. You still keep moving the whole way through. And that's when it sends you on like the, the first big launch um, up and through the ruins. And for a second, I actually put my hands back on uh, on the handlebar. I was like, oh, this is too much now. It's gotten too exciting. <laughs> <clears throat> but then by the time you're coming back down, it's like kind of like a Slinky Dog launch. If anyone's been on Slinky Dog Dash, where it's got a, a lot of kick to start. But then as you actually get to the top of the hill, it slows you down. So you're not like dropping fast. You're just going up fast, if that makes mm -hmm. sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I got gotcha. you. Then you go down from actual gravity, actual like momentum and do like the near figure eight over the water, which is beautiful. And I think this yeah, might be one of cool. It might be one of my favorite parts of the ride if I once I do it again, because I like I was trying to take it all in. But at the same time, just, I was just enjoy I was like, we wee. so <laughs> I think I think it would look really great if I could remember what it looked like. All I remember is the sensation just we we uh, <laughs> you turn a corner and there's another launch. So it's like launch, launch, we we. And then I could see Fluffy as we passed over him before we actually drive in front of him and he wasn't mm -hmm. moving. And I think that I've heard a couple of complaints that it does kind of bug me. And Fluffy's not moving until you actually approach him, but you're moving so fast. You're not supposed to notice. I just happen to turn my head behind me and look at over the corner, like over my shoulder. Mm -hmm. So was he moving when he got there? Yeah. As soon as you're approaching him, he's, he's growling. He's got a big bone. <laughs> and, and he's like lifting all of his heads up and down left and right and okay before anyone accuses me of uh being oh. all about universal and uh you know we said some negative things about star wars and disney so uh like people are gonna be like oh well, you love the haggard ride right so much but you're quick to you know put down millennium falcon having not even ridden it yet but i do have you know some cons i do have some things i wanted to nip wait 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 can we both just back up for a second? We did say we had eh, feelings about Millennium Falcon, but we both also said we're super excited to make our own opinion and write it. Well, yeah. So, so there. I know, yeah, but we whatever. were kind of okay, negative. So, you know, Blue Milk and make a fun of course of, we I make were, fun of Blue we Milk haven't all the time. Haven't even tried it yet. <laughs> I don't. I'm scared of Green Milk now after all the reviews. Anyway, go ahead. I'm still going to try it, but I'm still going to whatever. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, I'm not a fan of the fluffy skin. 
I think it looks weird. That's all. I've seen pictures of Fluffy, and I think he looks weird, too. It doesn't look like... um... So I have a Kronk, and he is more like the fur I would expect to see on a Fluffy. And I get it. it It's outside. I get Yeah. There's only so much I get it, too. Um, Yeah, exactly. And I mean, fur outside is probably not the best idea. (laughs) Now, if you watch clips from the movie that has Fluffy in it, uh, Chamber of Secrets, right? Uh, The Mm. CG is not great. So it kind of matches the movie (laughs) because the CG doesn't look like fur either. The CG, the wide shots just looks like a shiny rubber skin. So it's perfect. It matches exactly. Yeah. But because it's so tall and so like so big and towers over you and it's moving, like it's still impressive and it's still fun and it's growling at you. And also, also it's just being like a little nitpicky, which we kind of have to do at times, but it is what it is. Yeah, I'm, I'm, it's still, I admit it's a nitpicky uh, thing. It's not the, but it's still fluffy and we still get fluffy. So that's right. okay. I think it wor- this material works better for Buckbeak over at uh, Flight of the Hippogriff than it does for the dog. Yeah. Uh, it was a little saggy too. So you're saying Fluffy needs a facelift already? <laughs> Maybe. Or just like some extra padding inside <laughs> to keep it from flopping around. It's kind of like the the dinosaurs at Jurassic Park. It's It doesn't feel like it's attached oh. to their muscular system. It, it's just sagging the neck off their jiggles. skeleton. It's just sagging off their skeleton. And, the neck know. jiggles. Yes, <laughs> I always notice them. Yes, exactly. This and that's 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 somewhat of a slight. And you know what? It's only my first ride, but these are my yeah. Nitpicks. And I mean, it's it's a no, it that's a nitpick. That's not really. I don't. I wouldn't say it's a negative. Just like I wouldn't say what we said about Star Wars Land was negative. We just haven't seen it ourselves. So and but anyway, you turn left. You go toward the um the little cave entrance before the spike. Can't see the spike at all. Not even close. Um, oh, that's there's, awesome. There's a, a, a mist effect that's similar to the Hulk one that's made out of water, and that's going on. So it's misty around the cave entrance. The cave blocks your view, but also the Flying Ford Anglia, Anglia is there, and it's covered in way more uh, Cornish Pixies than I thought, like tons more. And they're all moving, and the doors swinging open and closed, and the stairs really? going left and right. So there's a lot of motion. This actually looks great. I was worried about the pixies looking too static, but this actually looks really, really good. Like there's a ton of them. The sound effects are on like really well. I think I saw more too in a different scene, like because there's 20, but I think they're mostly in two different spots. Uh, and that sounds awesome. Tons here. That actually looked great, you know, because you're not driving by a giant skin, you know, dog where you can see all its imperfections. Yeah. This is a little farther away and it's moving. So and you're moving. Then you dip down, then you go up the spike. I was in the second to last row. So I didn't really go up the spike so much as I saw the people ahead of me go up the spike. So I have to rewrite this in the front <laughs> to see how thrilling it actually is. But it was pretty like it's an interesting scene because like like all of a sudden you're like, oh, look like we're out of gas. And like everyone's like, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> it's like if you had kept going up the the broken track at Everest and then just immediately fell back down. It's like a good thrilling moment. That's awesome. It sounds so fun. But I wasn't even in the last seat. There was no one behind me in the last seat. I think they were not loading certain seats because they were sound issues. Um, but that last seat and even the second to last seat doesn't go up that spike. So if you're scared about going up high, ride in the last two seats. Well, if you're scared of going up high, why are you doing it on a coaster? Well, it's not that. It doesn't really go up high in most scenes. So just the, the ruins and the spike. Okay, Otherwise, so what happens after the spike and you go backwards? Go backwards. I go backwards. It had just rained a little bit. So I felt a little skid on the backwards launch and it Ooh. scared me to death. <laughs> like, oh my God, <laughs> like it lost grip a little bit. It was like, <laughs> I was like, Ooh, like when your brake pads don't completely lock when you're braking and you're a little worried. Um, <laughs> but it still is a powerful uh, couple backwards launches going back. And then this is my biggest con, biggest nitpick, biggest complaint for the whole ride. That show building, as beautiful as the mural is, when you're going backwards, that is all you see. You are close. You're yeah. like 10 feet away from that show building and you are just, it's a perfect view pointed right at it and there's no real trees in front of it. And even if there were, the sky blue does not bl- match the gray that it was that day. So at yeah. nighttime, I think this will be a lot better because they don't light up everything at nighttime. It's mostly mm-hmm. just what's in your headlights. So at nighttime, I think it'll blend in really well. But for daytime... This is like that is the most obvious that is more obvious than Guardians of the Galaxy show building because you are right there. <laughs> it is right in your face. So the biggest complaint is, you know, that mural looks great, but it's like, oh, look, a mural. <laughs> <laughs> it's supposed to look like 
there's nothing there, but there's a building wall there. Yeah, I saw it too. The blue sky looks too good to be like. I, I don't know. Is do you think there would be anything they could do to hide it better? Yeah, the original plans and even the released concept art was supposed to have like this big log in the middle of the circle as you rotate the helix as you go up. Mm-hmm. So you you'd still see the show the show building and it would still be quite obvious, but only for half the time maybe, and then you'd be your vision would be blocked by this giant centerpiece log thing. Um, and there was supposed to be another log earlier, but that one I don't think would doesn't that one being missing doesn't matter. But this one being missing, I think does it would have helped block your view as you turned around that circle. Yeah, maybe they'll put it in later. I don't know. Trees against the building might help. You know, this might have been uh, something where a mossy wall might have been a better fit than because the mural looks great from a distance. You know, mm-hmm. walking into the ride, you'd never notice it. But because you're so close to it, maybe a mossy wall might have been better. Yeah, or if there's room, like I said, you've been on it, so I don't know about the distance, but if there's room trees in front of it to add I mean, you depth, could put some help. trees, but it would be literally, they'd be flat. I think you'd be better off with vines because eh, there's not much room. And then, you know, not have it painted, just paint it like a brick wall like they did at the entrance area. So you have a big brick wall blocking the view of the coaster right at the entrance uh, for the interior queue. I think that wall might have been a better fit there. Hmm. Interesting. Um, and you know what? They might change it. Forbidden Journey used to have a brick wall designed um, for the flu powder scene at the very beginning and end, but it wasn't very believable. It was just this animated brick wall, so they changed it to the green flu powder thing that follows you while you're looking at it. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they just added the the, the fireplace smell finally after all these years because they finally figured out how to make it not go too far away and not make the whole ride smell like fireplace. So, you know, there's, they're always making little changes and this maybe one day they'll just paint it like bricks and put some moss on it. Yeah. If it'll look better. I mean, whatever looks better when you're on the ride, right? That's what matters. Magic podcast. Make it happen. If anyone's Yay! listening though, I really think it detracts from the rest of the ride. So that's, that's yeah. my biggest complaint. Even if it looks awesome. Oh, I got another complaint coming up. This just all sounds like complaints, but I want to say this ride is like the funnest thing ever. I <laughs> just want well, to say. You did say it was in your top three ever. In Orlando, yes. So, yeah. We'll get know. to that next. Yeah. I think because it's a fun coaster that also happens to have really well themed scenes and animatronics. Like if you took all that out, it would still be a really fun ride. Like it's a really fun coaster that happens to also be incredibly well themed. So it's got like that's like a bonus. Sounds good to me. So when you go inside, still going backwards, <laughs> yeah. uh, you start to slow down and you see the uh, centaur, mm-hmm. which I don't think he has motion, but he has a lighting effect on him that makes it look like he's kind of like lifting his bow at you. But I think mm-hmm. it's just the way that we're moving slowly back and the light is fading off of him. It makes it give the illusion of motion, um, which is fine. I'm fine with that. He's very well sculpted. He looks very realistic. So, okay. Yay, centaur. Okay. And this is a complaint I've seen from people. The tree oh. trunks in there, like like giant thick tree trunks, like the ET cube, but thicker. They look really well. Like it looks like you're entering the Forbidden Forest. They look great. But you can see where they stop at the roof line, at the mm-hmm. ceiling. I so suggest sorry. not dark enough. No, I think the lighting is fine. I just suggest that they paint it fading black as it gets closer to the ceiling. That way it gives the illusion of foreverness, um, which is something that Pirates of the Caribbean does really well, where the tops of the buildings and everything starts to get darker and darker until it fades to the ceiling. That way you don't notice that the ceiling, you know, is right there. Something yep. they don't do so great on. It's a small world because it's brighter and you can't really do that effect there. But it works great on Pirates and I've seen it. Um, like E.T. is taller. E.T. the Q is so tall that no one really notices. And there's lots of tree limbs down low. So your view of the like all the studio lighting and the roof is kind of, you never look up that high, but this, because the centaur's right there, you're looking right behind him. Yeah, that makes sense. And you see the tree trunks just stop and you can't like, they'd either have to turn off all the lights and you wouldn't be able to see the centaur or just, just if you're listening, just paint it fading black up to the ceiling. I think it'll be fine. Are they yeah. really listening? Actually, I shouldn't say that. I've been called out by certain people that I think would ever listen to anything <laughs> I'd say. I'm going to shut up now. Can't wait to see that movie, by the way. Um, yeah, me too. Yeah, my nieces saw it and they loved it. <sighs> Why didn't they take me? I know. That's what I said. <laughs> so other than that, though, um, 
the centaur scene is actually because you're moving so slow. It's actually a little longer than I thought. And then you head into the the devil snare, and Hagrid's talking. He's like, "Oh no, nope, looked like you got caught up in the devil snare." It's like, "Oh, Hagrid, what is wrong? Why are you sending <laughs> us into the dark forest? What's going on?" Um, it's like punished. a series. It's like a series of different effects all happening one after another after another, and it's really cool. Like. You see the vines that are static and really big around you. Then you see a thing start to come down in front of you um, that's like waving. I don't know if it's like from just a wind blowing or whatever, but it's waving like tentacles in front of you. Then some ones start coming out of the wall towards you. And like there's Ooh. and then the then ones start curling around other ones, uh, which is just like a a cylinder effect of spinning, but it looks like it's mm -hmm. curling around itself. So it looks very that good. That's cool. So all of it happens one, bum, bum, bum. So even though individually they're simple effects because they're happening one after another, it looks like you're getting more and more entangled and simple, but effective. And I think if you're sitting in the back, you're going to have a better view of all of this. If you're sitting in the front, it's all happening kind of behind you. And then Hagrid does the light effect and you fall. And it's, I've never been on a drop track before. It's actually really fast. Like it happens that in a split second. That is what I'm most looking forward to on that. Um, I think it's is, close is to it, 17 feet, but it happens. It doesn't seem that tall for anyone who's a little scared. It's just it, a neat little thing. Does it go really, really fast? Really, really, really fast? It happens. Drop? It doesn't have a delay or a false fall like 13 does. It's just a boom. Like it happens immediately. There's a flash of light and then you fall. And it's so within an instant that you don't even realize, like it doesn't have enough time to even get the pit in your stomach kind of thing. It's more just to spook you. That's pretty cool. It's neat. It's like the, the, wanna, it's all of I a sudden the scenery all around you immediately changes in a blink. That's what's neat about it. I want to do that part so bad. Like I'm in the devil's snare. There's a flash of light and now I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ride that. Oh, I want it just for that one part. I'm so curious about that. So it's a little more lit at the bottom i think because the there's light coming from outside or whatever there must be there must be doors or something or just the way that the track curves on the upper because it got really dark in the devil's snare mm -hmm. but at the bottom this is the part i had no idea what happened <clears throat> he's like there's the rest of my scroots <laughs> there's like <laughs> glowing uh blast ended scroots in down here um they don't move or anything i think they're just part of the scenery but it was neat it was like hell oh, oh there they are and then like um there's a big uh, lit fog effect, which didn't happen in the first group, but it happened for me in this room. And I thought that was neat. Um, and then we were let out of there. And I guess because we're being attacked by Scroots, he's like, nah, now's a good time to use the dragon fire button. And the people in the motorbike get to, get to all press the button. And this launch is massive. This is like the the fastest launch. And, and I knew it would be, I talked about it in my video, it was like, and then there's one really big launch uh, to end the ride but you're on the ground for this launch way longer than i thought you were like it is you're just for a long ways on the ground and then you take off and start flying and then you go through the ruins one more time and it never lets up steam it is a huge launch that sounds so cool i'm really jealous now and the the rumors of the ride being rougher um, it's not rough for people it's rough for the ride vehicles and this is the moment that supposedly is causing the most um, roughness on the vehicles. So they're going to have to make some changes to make them stronger. And in the meantime, it's going to require more maintenance. And I, I think it's all comes down to this launch, but this launch makes the ride. This is so fun and so fast. Like this is test track fun, like <laughs> test track. Imagine if test track had like a uh, really fast, awesome spots the whole way through and never really stopped. And then at the end had that really fast part. That's kind of like what this is. Like it should <laughs> it's have. Not, <laughs> it's not just one really good fast part. It's a whole bunch of other ones, but then that really big one at the end. That's awesome. That sounds so fun. I'm very jealous. And then it's not even over. And all of a sudden he's like, oh, look, it's a unicorn and her baby. And the baby was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the, that was probably my favorite animatronic. Um, and Shocker. I know people have been Hey, shut up. I know people have gotten close ups and like said, hey, look at the skin. It doesn't look great. Or look at the ears. You can see the disconnect from whatever. And I'm like, look, this we're moving by. It's in a, it's farther away than it looks. Uh, it's hair. I think they have a someone that goes out and combs the mane of the unicorn because it's so pretty. Like every day they have to comb it and keep it pretty. You want that job, um, don't you? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> and the 
the baby though is like snuggling toward her mother and it's so cute and sweet and it's a good motion and like it's a nice animatronic for outside these animatronics actually look really good but i think that's that's a nice moment to end on it's a happy moment to end on you know especially since we were being attacked by scroots just a couple seconds ago yeah and you just got your unicorn at the end which is your favorite thing anyway I'm just happy that it got to be in the ride because it's not anything I'd ever heard. But as I put in my video, hopefully we'll be able to see a unicorn because, you know, they're the only time we ever do in the movies is a dead one. That's nice to see one alive and a baby bonus. <laughs> they put the baby there just for you. Yeah. Double we're, the unicorn. We're going to we're going to go with that. It doesn't have a horn yet. So it just looks like a pony. <laughs> I have a horse under my desk right now named Kronk. So. Sounds fun. I'm super jealous. In case you didn't pick it's up really on that fun. yet, it sounds super fun. I mean, I wish I, I wish they'd done soft opening so I could have written it twice before we did the podcast, but I've only done it the once. And I'm, like I said, most of the time was wee, wee, wee. So, <laughs> you know, there'll be things I notice or things I, I missed or um, maybe some of the cons won't be so bad now that I know what to expect. But it was a lot of fun. Where does it rank? You said in your top three, so... Yeah, it's in top three for now. You know, it might change after I go on it some more. So, so what are the other two vying for the same spots for the well for the top um, three spots? I should say I did my top. I did my top five because people were asking. I actually posted on Twitter that do you really want to know what my top five rides are when I'm a person that likes Pizza Rizzo and Comic Strip Cafe? <laughs> Apparently, they do. <laughs> and people, yeah, people actually wanted, and no one seemed to like complain about my list of. So I have a good taste in rides, just bad taste in food. Apparently, no, I. I still put um, Spider-Man, The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man, still my top ride, I think, in Orlando. Okay. Um, and I still like Flight of Passage. So I have that as number two. But I'm a huge fan of Avatar, and I think it's the best simulator ride around. So, And I actually like simulator rides. I'm weird like that. And I like 3D rides. So, you know. Those are fine with me. I like those picks. Um, so three is the Hagrid ride. Hagrid's Magical Creatures Motorbike Adventure. It's number three. I also have I have Forbidden Journey as number four and Tower of Terror as number five. I, I like those rides too. Forbidden Journey is a really good ride. Um, but the caveat is that Haunted Mansion and Everest are really close to the t- to top five spots. They just got bumped out because of uh, Hagrid and Flight of Passage recently. Um, and now that Hagrid ride, because it doesn't really have much stops, like just the one stop in the drop track, and even that is like so, so much just happening. It doesn't even feel like a stop. Everest, I feel like next time I go on Everest, it's going to be like those long pauses are going to detract from my uh, quality of ride there. I think that first stop, though, when you're outside, uh, that first stop, though, when you're outside, I kind of like the pause. I don't mind it because you kind of sit there you know, like, what is so going long. on? It's so it's sometimes mo- when it's running right and it's only six and a half seconds. I really like that. But sometimes it's like 15 or more seconds. Uh, and I don't know if it's a capacity issue, like if they were too close to another train or, and there's not even the bird on the stick to look at most of the time, you know? <laughs> so, uh, I don't mind the other pause so much cause we have the animation to watch and it's cold in there. Yeah. But I like that the Haggard ride doesn't stop. I thought it would, I thought it would stop in the, in the, the scrut scene. And I thought it would stop at the top of the spike, but because it's just always moving, it's, it's a really fun coaster. Yeah, it sounds like a really good coaster. I'm glad. I'm glad they they did something with that area. I miss dueling dragons, and I love dueling dragons. But Dragon Challenge after the dueling stopped, and it just wasn't as good a ride. And and that's another thing too is that it really seems to fit the area better than the big giant steel dueling coaster did. Yeah. Uh, once it became Hogsmeade, it never felt like they put up a wall. You can barely see it. Um, the line got shorter. It stopped dueling eventually. It just felt like it was a slow death for the ride. And now seeing this here, and they they have a little sound effect that goes when the the motorbike goes by, they like make more sound so it's louder for everyone who's walking by in Hogsmeade. And it's like, because <laughs> um, I've seen it go by without that sound effect on. You don't hear the onboard sound, so it's very quiet. So when the sound is on, though, it just creates this level of excitement and gets people excited to go get in line for the ride, or at least in the future when there's not a line out the door. That's cool. I don't mind that at all. Yeah, I, I'm glad they did it. It's, um... I think the queue... The queue finally feels like a Potter queue. It doesn't, you know, the Dragon Challenge was like cut, like stripped down Dueling Dragons queue, and now it's actually its own thing. Finally. Yeah, I, I, I'm, 
This is a good deal. Good job. It sounds fun. I can't wait to get on it. I mean, best ride at the resort since Forbidden Journey. Or what else has there been? <laughs> the, the Gringotts. Yeah, um, don't, don't. Jimmy Fallon. Don't know. Uh, That's not great. Uh, Fast and Furious. You. Kong came Am after, right? Am I naming right? them all? King Kong oh, came after. Oh, King Kong. Yeah, no, it's still better than that. That's for sure. Hey, I like that ride. I like it too, but this is way better. Of course. <laughs> This is a visceral experience that happens to also have themed scenes and animatronics. I'm just saying, my favorite part of the Fallon ride is the safety spiel, and I have not been fast. I haven't been on Fast and the Furious, and I just don't. I don't care. <laughs> not to be blunt or fa- hateful to anybody who likes that ride, I just I am not excited. I all to try two it. of them. My favorite part of the Fallon ride is listen to my voice in the tube. <laughs> Come on, the safety spiel is the best part. It's so good. Eh, it's okay. What? I like. Uh, I like. I like I like his just weird banter while you're riding. It's like, what else is fun in 3D? Ooh, t-shirt cannons. <laughs> <laughs> we should sell these. Oh man. Um, no, this is pure fun, pure joy. Uh the fact that people can wait 10 hours and get off the ride and be like, it was worth it. It was totally worth it. And I get it, it's an experience to go on opening day. And that in the days following it, people are a little more upset that it's still not running uh perfectly. Yeah, I there's a lot in that the launches and everything. And then the technology of all the animatronics, I think it'll be fine oh. sooner than later. I, I mean, I've been comparing it to Gringotts, which had some issues also same manufacturer and now it runs perfect, you know, just give it some time. It'll run perfect. But someone else reminded me the frozen ever after it didn't run very well in its opening and didn't mm. have soft openings. Mm. It, it, there were long lines and the, they were kept breaking down or uh, the projection faces would be off and it's creepy. <laughs> It's creepy anyway from I, I want to I, I didn't even go on that ride. Sorry, folks. I didn't wait for that line. It was the line was too long. I didn't want to wait for it. But now it's like 45 minutes in the afternoon. Yeah, and, you of know, course. Three hours forever. Yeah, it I think it was the best capacity. I think it was three hours last time I was there. I'm like, I'm not waiting three hours for that ride. Yeah. And it was 45 minutes the last time I was there. And I was impressed because um, it's, you know, it's not as popular. It's not new and shiny anymore. And this is very new and shiny. And they'll get it working. I can't wait until it's working perfect. I just imagine a year from now and it's like Gringotts where I can just go wait in the single rider line for five minutes and get to ride this. And like that to me is so exciting. That's cool. Yeah. I just want to get on it. I need to get on it first. (laughs) Yeah. I just need to ride it. (laughs) Well, I'm going to try to get back probably around the day that this podcast comes out or the day after Um, maybe Thursday or Friday, I'm going to try to go back and get on the motorbike seat and maybe hopefully get in toward the front. So get a completely different experience next time. Ooh, then you go up the spike. Yeah. So I wonder if it's, uh, since there's so many launches, like most coasters, the front's usually smooth and the back is usually where all the G forces are. So I wonder if you'll feel a difference that way too, since you were almost in the back. Cause I've been describing the launches as very punchy. Like they have a lot of power. And I wonder if that's from being on the sidecar in the back. And I wonder if it's not as much in the front, but. So you're going to go total opposite front motorbike? Yeah, exactly. Sweet. And then I'll and then I'll wait a little while until the lines calm down. <laughs> Let everyone else ride it <laughs> until I come back. Um, and then, you know, because like I waited eight hours uh, a couple days after Hogsmeade first opened, the first Wizarding World opened. I didn't go opening day. I think I went a couple days later and I still waited eight hours in line wrapped around the park just to get into Hogsmeade. And then I went to go on Forbidden Journey. I went through the queue the, the first time, but then I went on single riders and there was no ride. There was no one in single riders at all. Like no one. So I went on four times the first day I did Forbidden <laughs> Journey. By the fourth time, I decided I'm going to look to the left and right and see how this thing works. <laughs> like I haven't had that chance yet. I haven't been on this the new ride that many times that I can like look behind me and look around and kind of see how some of these things worked like there's uh all i remember from the uh, from the devil's snare is like whoa 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 <laughs> so i'd be interested to to be able to just focus on one effect at a time and see how it all works yeah i look forward to hearing all that stuff too but yeah this is this is a winner this is a big this is top 10 ride in orlando no matter who you are this is a great ride oh you say that now we'll find it. somebody's gonna have a complaint about that someone's gonna be contrarian for fun tom corliss wrote that this is the best family coaster in Orlando. That's how it went. now I know everyone likes there's it. There's always now I know. one. If you are if you are the one and you are in our group, please speak up. I won't make fun of you. That's not why I want you to speak up. I just want to prove to Alicia there's always one. Well if you don't like going fast or having fun. <laughs> I knew you were gonna say that. So yeah, there you go. Hagrid ride. 
Hag ride. Hag ride. Hag ride. Hashtag. I don't know. I'm, I'm mad that I didn't come up with that. That's too brilliant. <laughs> Whoever came up with that. Congratulations. You win the hashtag wars. Oh, it's right in front of us too. We should have thought of that sooner. Oh, I forgot. Okay. There's some, some other small little things. Um, there's not an, uh, there's not an on camera photo yet. They're going to be adding an on, on, wait, an, an on ride photo yeah, yet. There you go. Yeah. Sorry. An on ride photo yet. They haven't installed the cameras as far as I know. Um, is it technically a, a, is it technically in with theming if it doesn't move when you get it? Cause the news. Oh, well, a lot of the new ones at Disney have the moving ones where you download them on your app or whatever. That's not the so, same as like the newspapers. Well, it's moving. They, they give you a DVD <laughs> when you go to shutter buttons. Just wondering. Yeah, but they they have a kiosk set up with a like a window to buy your photo and it's really well themed and it's at the exit, but it's not open yet because they, they don't have the photo ready. So that'll be interesting. I, I would hope it's on the last launch because that one is like the most shocking is the most like that's everyone's face is going to be like, whoa, <laughs> you have to be, right after you hit the you hit the dragon fire button and like it doesn't do anything, but everyone totally feels like they just made. Oh, yeah. The, the thing launch. It's not and fun. If you don't matters. if you don't play along, it's not fun. I don't know who said it. Matt, I'm sorry. I'm quoting you. I don't remember who, but someone on Twitter said that it's funny that the dragon fire button that doesn't do anything is more fun to hit than the going to light speed on the Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run ride, which actually does do something. <laughs> like that says a lot about how fun this ride is, that even the non-interactive fake thing is so fun. Got to do it. If, yeah. you, if you're not there to have fun and make believe, then what are you doing there? I dare you to come off this ride not smiling. I mean, unless you get motion sickness from roller coasters, in which case you probably <laughs> won't be. But what are you doing going on a roller coaster? I was like, well, coaster? I can come off not smiling intentionally, but... It's more, in, it's more. I don't know what to say intense, but it's more thrilling than Mummy because it doesn't have pausing. Yeah, I like the Mummy. So a anyone lot, wondering so. about that? I love the Mummy. It's a fun ride. It's because the Mummy only has like the one launch, right? It's just the one launch. Well, isn't the, there the, 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 the second part's more like a drop than a launch? Uh, it just kind of pushes you. Well, it's kind of a little. Yeah, launch, it's like yeah. a little launch after the fire ceiling room. Isn't there a little? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a little, it's a little nudge. It's a little nudge. <laughs> You just you get el- imagine five more get elbowed, launches. Get elbowed. You know. <laughs> five more launches, you know, because there's a backward section on uh on mummy, but this one is like four times as long. Yeah, that's fine. On this ride. Sounds good. Backwards on a motorcycle. Yeah, the, That'll be a new feeling. The mummy is uh and you know, talk about theming. The mummy has like the flats painted with van art with flashing lights. I know. <laughs> you know. And it's it's still fine. It's a great ride and the coaster yeah. segments are really good, but you know, it's, I mean, when rock and roller coasters flats are more themed than the, the mummy flats, because you can see the edges of the squares. <laughs> <laughs> They're not even cut out to fix the sh- fit the shape of the weird screaming guy whose eyes are exploding. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, screaming I know guy whose about. eyes are exploding. <laughs> <laughs> it's, <laughs> still doesn't matter, though, because the mummy is so fun. You can get away with a little yeah. area like that. It's and got some creepy music. Yeah, and the mummy, the mummy itself, especially when you first enter, you look, the animatronic looks pretty damn good, so... You know, I don't hear that much. I don't remember hearing that much music on the Hagrid ride, but it's probably like I need to rewrite it. I think it's hidden underneath the motorbike sounds for the first half. You're there's, too busy. There's so much like, <laughs> like you don't hear the music. But when you go into the Devil's Snare, you definitely hear music. And at the end, you definitely hear music. So you're way like, too busy just having fun. Yeah. Smile on your face and hands <laughs> in the air. Yeah. It's the way to do it. it. Was, if it wasn't for the obvious show building, I think it's a perfect ride. All right, is that it? Are we done? I think so. Yay! Hagrid. Get on it, guys, because I, I need to go ride it still. Seriously, you guys need to get out there and ride Hagrid. And on that note... <laughs> Good night, everyone. Bye, guys.